Hi guys, so I have a test on the periodic table in CAM on Monday. Um, I've only been in this class for like a week, but we have a test on the periodic table, so I figured I should make a video of it. Um, why not? Um, I was just going to talk about it, all the families and some tips for um, rem remembering the symbols. Um, and if you're a loser, you probably colored in the periodic table too, you know, only tryhards would do that. Yeah, so I started doing that. Um, so let's go. Please excuse this god awful lighting, too. It's like the morning and the sun like hasn't even come up yet, and my room is just dark. I'm sorry. Okay, so here's my kind of colored in drawing of the periodic table. I started doing it by families, although I'm not completely done with this one, but I did this one a while ago. See right here, I know it's like backwards, right? Um, but see, I colored in by all the families, um, so we're just going to talk about each family I'm going to try. Okay, so the first family I'm going to talk about is these right here. They're called the alkaline metals. Um, they all have low melting and boiling points compared to most metals, and they're really soft, like, and easily cut with a knife. They have low densities, and a lot of them float on water. Um, these also are a lot of mineral nutrients that you would need, like potassium, calcium, and um, you need them in your body because they're just necessary. Okay, so the next group I want to talk about is these in yellow. These are the alkaline earth metals and they're hella reactive. So you don't find them in nature and they react really quickly with other elements. Um, they have an oxidation number of, they all have an oxidation number of plus two and they're right next to the alkali metals on the periodic table and they are alkaline earth. Okay, so I'm gonna switch periodic tables because this one isn't completely colored in, so I'm gonna use this one. Um, right here, this huge block that you see in pink is all the transition metals. Um, these don't really follow any major rule, like maybe like the alkaline earth metals follow, um, but they're not all the same. Although the transition metals are all used as metal and they have they're very dense and they have high melting points. Um, they're used as metal. Like, for example, you know, gold somewhere on here. Yeah, gold is used like as metal and they're really malleable and they boil at a high temperature. They conduct electricity and basically all of them, are, yeah, just all used as metal and they're most well known for having metal. Okay, so the next family we're gonna talk about is this here, this block. These are the post-transition metals, and they are really br brittle and have poor mechanical strengths. Their melting points are significantly lower than their neighbor transition metals. Okay, so here we go with the metalloids. See, this is kind of a staircase. Um, the metalloids are sort of like metals, but they're not. They can be shiny or dull. They can conduct heat. Um, they can conduct heat better than non-metals, obviously, but they're not as good as metals. Um, they're also solid at room temperature, and they're ductile, and you can pull them apart, and they gain, it's okay, so that for the chemical properties, they gain electrons as they go across the stair step, and then to the left of the stair step, they start losing electrons when bonding. So now we're going to talk about the halogens. Haha, <laughs> I love that name. It's like halogen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a kid and name it halogen. <laughs> Imagine if, like, I named all my kids after, like, families on the periodic table, like, <laughs> oh, get it? Family? I'm out. Okay, seriously, though, let's talk about halogens. Okay, so they are right here, and they are highly reactive, and they, since they have seven valence electrons on their outermost, um, electron shell, um, that they will probably will gain electrons because um, these the noble gases over here have eight. Okay, so the next group I'm going to talk about is this group right here. It has um, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon, which they are all atmospheric components and they're vital to our breathing. Um, that's basically over here. Or is noble gases, aka my favorite. Because, you know, gases. Anyway, so noble gases are ex known for being noble, like, they're known for being extremely unreactive because they have a full shell of valence electrons, meaning that they can't lose or gain an electron because 
atoms want when they, through chemical reactions they want to have eight a full shell of eight valence electrons and if since the noble gases already have a shell of eight which is the kind of end result of a chemical reaction that they don't gain anything they don't react all right so here we go with the lanthanoids okay i really like this one because it's like so underground and nobody ever talks about it well it's in my eighth grade chem class um we never even learned about it but so i'm just gonna kind of go through it right now they are all relatively soft and they have high melting and boiling points they're extremely reactive and they they actually burn in air too and they're strong reducing agents they're generally ionic and they are they're also rare earth metals and they ignite and burn vigorously moving on to my other favorite underground family of elements right here we got the actinides which are all extremely reactive and highly electropositive they tarnish readily in air and they're really dense they also react with boiling water or dilute acid to release hydrogen gas they combine mostly with non-metals too okay so i'm pulling out my other periodic table for this one and these are all the random ones that start with a U that nobody really knows anything about. Well, all I can tell you is that they know that all these are man-made. They're all highly radioactive and dense, and they are created in a laboratory and do not exist in nature. Last but not least, we got hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen doesn't fit in with any other family because it's it's got its own characteristics that don't really follow any other rules. But basically, it's the lightest element known. Okay, so I think I'm going to wrap it up right now because I kind of explained all the families and some of their characteristics. Um, I said I was going to teach you some ways to memorize the symbols, but I think I'm going to do that in another video because this is already really long. Okay, bye!